Hi, this is part two of a three-part series on Heis de Calera in Spain. There'll be a link to their website in the description underneath the video. Last week I was looking at the Iberian Lynx. This week we're looking at the Iberian Imperial Eagle, or the Spanish Imperial Eagle. Used to be thought of as the same species as the Eastern Imperial Eagle. Now they've been separated and the Spanish one became very, very scarce. Back in the 1960s they were down to 30 pairs. A lot of effort's gone into building their numbers up and there's a lot more of them now. Very much like the Iberian lynx from last week, they're very dependent upon rabbits. That's their main food source. They have two hides for them here, and I'll be looking at both of those. And also that leads you on to photographing marsh harriers and ravens and common buzzards. All the morning sessions require an early start. You want to be inside the hide before sunrise. And none of the hides require any walking. You can drive the car right up to the hide itself. Jose is setting up the fans, an essential bit of kit. Keeps the windows demisted and later on keeps you a little bit cooler if it does get warm. Okay. Now it's very dark when you first get inside the hide. The chairs in these hides have very thin cushions on them. So the best thing to do is when you get in the hide in the darkness first thing in the morning, make sure you get in first. And then you take the cushion off the other chair and put it on your chair. So you've got two of these thin cushions. That makes it much more comfortable. When the other photographer gets in, it's dark. He doesn't know there should be a cushion there. He's just not aware of it. So he, he doesn't miss it. But it only works the first day. Oh, the chair, the chair is very hard. <laughs> and then he say, oh, man, it's lovely, comfortable. And I say, well, you've got a cushion. Oh. He had the two cushions. You're serious? Yeah, oh, and me, I was sitting on a hard oh, chair. Not allowed. You know, me, 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 me. That's, that's Mike. <laughs> and now I've got pies. <laughs> Come on, get in the car. I've got a storyline here. Yeah, yeah, I've got a, a rave in Belgium. This hide is called the Step Hide and it's just very open. There's some distant hills, but otherwise it's just flat ground. Now a slight problem when you're shooting a video is you're not using a tripod. The tripod head is attached to a shelf, but every time the other photographer touches the shelf, you get vibration. Fortunately, by this point, Anglo-Belgian relations had improved and we could cooperate. We start the video, we both back off from the shelf and let the camera run. And when you've finished and you want to stop, you just put your hand up by the button indicating you're ready but you have to wait for the other person to raise their hand too before you can touch the camera. Post-Brexit cooperation, wonderful. Unlike when I was photographing the lynx, there's no waiting here. The birds come in as soon as the car drives away. Notice the marsh area coming in from the left hand side. That was a regular flight path. And that's something that's very important when you're trying to do birds in flight. You want a repetitive flight path. You might not get it the first time, but if the birds keep coming from the same direction, you stand more of a chance because you know what's going to happen. From a stills photography point of view, this is so easy for the OM-1. Almost every frame at 50 frames per second is razor sharp, despite the bird coming head on towards me. If you've got your hand on the zoom, as it becomes too close, too big in the frame, you can start to zoom back. But you have to be ready for that. You have to have your hand on that zoom because it's a long stretch forward to grab hold of it. And it's a big zoom ring as well. It's quite awkward to grab. 1600 ISO ensures you're getting a shutter speed faster than 2500 of a second. When the birds are on the floor, well it's a bit untidy, lots of loose bits of grass, but there's lots of logs and posts for them to land on too, and they look more photogenic when they jump up on those logs. Marsh harriers are often fighting, and I was really hoping this pair would launch themselves at each other, but they didn't, just a bit of a, a tug of their legs. More interactions here, one bird flying at another. It's a regular thing with marsh areas, they're quite aggressive to one another.
there was a surprising lack of interaction between the magpies and the marsh harrier. The harrier just tended to ignore the magpies and I didn't see the magpies pulling the tails of the harrier like you do with buzzards and eagles. This was the exception. This marsh harrier didn't like sharing the log with this magpie. At times the Harriers would come very close to the hide. This is taken with the built-in 1.25 extender on the 150 to 400 mm lens. And Ravens too. Ravens can be so variable. In some parts of the world they are silly tame birds that take no notice of people and in other places very very wary. Just one visit from a common buzzard the Spanish Imperial Eagle also came in very early, not long after the car had left. This was its favourite tree. The magpies had to desert it as soon as the eagle arrives. And they would sit there quite happily for hours at a time. But also gave enough opportunity for flight pictures too, as they would take off and circle round and go back to this tree. When you're waiting for a bird to launch into flight, you need to keep an eye on it to see if it excretes. Now watch the bird on the right. It excretes because it wants to lose body weight before it launches into the air. So you can be ready. You can bring the bird into focus, or rather focus just in front of the bird. And then with peaking active, so the bird turns red when it's in focus, you try and manually keep it in focus as it comes to your left hand side. All the slow motion video is taken at 240 frames per second, which means you're dropping down to HD. When it comes to stills photography, I can totally rely upon the autofocus with the bird detection on. and all I worry about is a shutter speed faster than 2500. Like the Marsh Harrier, I preferred it when the Imperial Eagle came up on the logs. Didn't always look so attractive on the floor. It does help the autofocus if you can smoothly follow the bird, but it's very tolerant. I mean, here the bird is hardly in the frame, but it still manages to keep that eye sharp. But nevertheless, it's better, it stands more chance if you can keep the bird in the middle of the frame. Not easy to do with a flying bird. They have more than one Spanish Imperial hide, so now we're off to the second one, which is up in the mountains rather than on that flat ground. And like all of the hides we visited, the car can get you very, very close. The eagle spent a lot of time on the top of this distant tree. And that was very useful because you saw the birds leave the tree and launch into flight from a considerable distance. So you had plenty of warning when they were coming. These branches were very close to the hide and in order to be able to get the bird in the frame I was having to zoom back. A 400mm was far too much lens. This shot is zoomed back to 256mm.
Just the once did a bird land on the rocks in front of us, but there was another creature that liked these rocks, and a new one for me. This is the Egyptian mongoose. I've never seen one. It's not known if they were introduced into Spain or whether they've managed to naturally colonise the country, but they are not great posers for the camera. Heads are always down, bodies half hidden away. I found them quite difficult to get stills pictures. This one is about to pose now. That's a wonderful pose, but I'm shooting video and not taking stills. I always get frustrated. That's a stills picture extracted from the video, which I've talked about before on YouTube. And that's one of the few stills pictures I got, but there's another animal in the way with its head hidden. In next week's film, taken at the same location, we'll have a look at the goshawk. Thanks for watching.